Hi, this is Joel Polis, and you're watching the Son of Celluloid Show. Son of Celluloid! What's up, folks? It's uh, Nathan Hamilton, the son of Cellular. We're hanging out here at Days of the Dead. I'm sitting here with Mr. Joe Polis. How are you doing today? I'm fine, Nathan. Nice awesome. Now, uh, I took a look at your uh, website beforehand, and they mentioned a performance of Frankenstein that you gave at age 11. Oh. That made apparently made a, a neighbor girl very upset. Can you tell us anything about that performance? Yeah, my bro- I have an identical twin brother, and uh, we used to put on these carnivals in the backyard and theatrical performances. In the uh, in the garage, so I wrote a script for Frankenstein. I played Doctor Frankenstein, and we had this kid from up the street, Howard Barkin, who was enormous, eight year old kid. I mean, huge. So <laughs> we did a performance, and neighborhood kids gave us a penny each, and we they'd sit down and watch this play. And it was so scary to this one girl, this neighborhood heartthrob, Darlene Baker, or something like that, that she came. She went running out into the driveway and and peed in her pants all over the all over the driveway. She was so scared by what we did in the uh, in the uh, garage. It was uh, very funny. Did that endear you to Miss Neighborhood Heartthrob, or did uh, she steer clear from there on out? My memory is kind of vague about it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Now, uh, of course, you're one of, one of your best known flicks is, of course, The Thing, which yes. we're here doing the Thing reunion. Yes. Uh, how'd you come to be involved in that project? And was a lot of people have this preconception about horror directors yeah. and you know John Carpenter was already well known was he what you expected to work with well what was interesting is I went to USC undergraduate school and John was in the film department but he was a few years ahead of me four or five and uh, I was in the theater school so he actually saw a student film that I did at USC okay. and he knew me from that film I mean, when he brought that up, I just about fell out of my chair. I just got a call from my agent to go in and meet John and all that, and I did, and he called me back, and he hired me. So it was a delightful experience. He's a sweet, sweet man with a a dark vision of the planet. (laughs) And one of the, uh, it was beeping. Okay, it's gone. (laughs) Back to it. All right, now, one of the things that makes that movie so great is the very natural chemistry amongst the ensemble cast there. Yeah. Was that was that in the script or did that come out more during well, you know, as, rehearsals as, or together? Did, did you go to the Q&A? I missed it. Okay. So we rehearsed the play for two weeks before we started okay. filming. And most of the actors on, on the uh, show, there's Big Keith David, yep. were theater actors. You know that voice anyway. <laughs> yeah, you do. And we developed a real ensemble feeling so that it was very spare, very minimal, but people were really reacting, and they just did a fantastic job as a as a cast, you know. Right, you think the because uh, there was a lot of stage actors in there, so that actors, but a lot of fed into were not it. Known at that point, and so uh, we were character people and unassuming, and it just came across beautifully on the screen. Yeah. Cool. Now, did they ever tell certain cast members something they didn't tell the rest of them oh, to yeah, kind of bring stuff in? Thing, yeah. yeah. No, John really left the acting to us. Um, certain relationships developed that were stronger than others, and that came out in the screen in, uh, on screen. But you know, okay, yeah. Now, do you have any interesting stories from filming in such extreme conditions? Well, most of it was filmed in Los Angeles yeah. on a soundstage at Universal, where it was 110 degrees outside, and they lowered the temperature to about 45 inside the sound studio. <coughs> <clears throat> um, pardon me. Um, uh, uh, filming in the in in Alaska, there was just one night where we were outside filming till about three o'clock in the morning, and it went down to minus thirty. Uh, but those Eddie Bauer parkas they had us in were so incredible that we stayed warm and it all turned out beautifully. Um, you know, and it was fun flying around in helicopters and shooting off flamethrowers and <laughs> riding in snow cats and all that kind and of stuff. to play with great toys. Oh my god, it was an adolescent's wet dream. And of know. course, another one of the main things that made that movie great were the effects. Yes. Did you see them for the first time on set, or did you get to watch them develop as they were well, doing as, them? Or? As Richard mentioned in the, in the uh, uh, talk uh, to the audience, sometimes you'd walk in and you'd see a sculpture of a dog, or you'd see two heads or something, and you didn't know where they were going to fit in, but you had an idea of what it was going to look like. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, the question I'm sure you get all the time, what happened to Fuse? 
I think you should go see the film and decide for yourself. Now, there um, stills have come out of a scene that was apparently shot with the, uh, the shovel scene. Yes, this one right here. How much was that whole scene actually shot, or was well, it those John, test shots, or what? John, actually, this is how I was killed in Los Angeles. And then he took it aside and he thought, well, this is really a slasher killer murderer. This is not an alien creature. Why would they do that? Here's an actual a Polaroid of me in the full makeup hanging on the door and waving to the photographer. Oh, nice. But uh, when we got up to Alaska, John went, it makes no sense. We're redoing your death scene. And out of that, we got this scene where I go outside and find some clothing and I disappear. So that's how that happened. Now, um, the thing is now considered a classic, but when it came out, it really had trouble finding its audience at the time. Why do you think that is, and remember, why did it take so long? I went with my girlfriend and friends in New York to see it, and when it was over, we all just looked at each other, and I went, there was no hoopla, there was no publicity, there was no nothing. I mean, there was no opening in New York or anything like that. And we, like I said, we were sandwiched in between E.T., Right. And poltergeist. And the week that we opened, the cat people was supposed to open. Okay. Which was a total bomb, so they moved that out of the way and just without with two weeks notice they they put the thing in that time slot and it just did a great disservice to the to the right. movie. But you know, that's that showbiz. Yep. Now another uh, movie we were talking about before we uh, started rolling is serial killer. Yes. That uh, is really hard to find and do you have any, you know, Interesting memories from making that film, yes, or I do you know if it's Pierre coming David, out? Pierre David was the director and the producer. He's from Canada. Mm-hmm. It's the first time a director ever offered me a drink on the set <laughs> before I filmed. I, I was, I, I, I don't know. I'm from the theater. I would never take a drink before I went on stage. So I, I went, no, thank you. And but you know, I get it. He was just try, having a good time and trying, and, right. you know. And it was it was great fun to film. So. Now, another flick you made called, uh, you were in called Fallen Angels. You, oh, please, don't, we won't even talk about Don't that. even want to talk about that one, huh? All right, well, throughout your, you know, career, you've done the widely varied, you know, movies. Yeah. Is there a gem in your collection that you think people don't really know about that doesn't get the kind of, you know, yes. knowledge that the thing yeah. does? What do yeah. you think is one of those undiscovered gems? There was a uh, an AFI thesis that I did, the American Film Institute, and I played a capo in a concentration camp a murderous pedophile capo and no one has seen me that do that kind of work right and you know with a polish accent and it was an extraordinary short film about 25 minutes long and some of the best work i've ever done on screen cool well i'd like to thank you very much for talking to me and uh stay here on son of celluloid for uh more interviews from days of the dead okay